What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben. So today when it comes to older iPhones, as you can see here, this is my iPhone X. We have a new update that's available, not just for this device, but among others as well. So if we go into settings, go to general and then go to software update, you can see that this is iOS 16.7.8. On my iPhone X, the exact update size comes in at exactly 190. 90.1 megabytes and I've done research online on my other devices on X and other platforms just to see you know the update size on and averages and I can be happy to let you know that it's ranging between 185 to about 220 so not too big of an update and in case you're curious about this iOS 16.7.8 it's available for devices that some support iOS 17 but people are keeping them on iOS 16 just for stability and just security updates only and then it's also available for devices that were dropped from the support of iOS 17 so those dropped devices that no longer support iOS 17 that's the iPhone 8 the iPhone 8 plus as well as this iPhone X. If you have an iPhone XS Max that supports iOS 17 but you haven't updated the device in a long time, then most likely, like my device that you see here, it's going to be on the old iOS version, which is going to be 16.0. And when you try to do a software update, the latest version of iOS 17, which at this point in time is iOS 17.5 will be available as an option. But then you also have the option to update to iOS 16.7.8 or the latest version of iOS 16, which will be available. So that's something that's good. Don't be like me because what happened with my iPhone XS, I wanted to keep it on iOS 16.7 for stability and I didn't want to go and try out new softwares as you know they introduce some bugs and issues so I did that and it ended up updating over the air so what you want to do if you don't want to let it update over the air by itself is to turn off um, automatic updates and then that way you'll be in full control of the updates but then also something that I wanted to highlight is that when it comes to other releases that came out alongside this, Apple released a number of those. And like I mentioned, iOS 17.5 came out today and the latest version of watchOS 2 came out with some new watch faces. But just to show you some other releases, we got iOS 17.5, you can see it right there iPad OS 17.5, Mac OS 14.5, TV OS 17.5. And then you can see for all the devices, of course, this is iOS 16.7.8 and iPad OS 16.7.8. Now, unfortunately, there was no release when it comes to iOS 15.8.3. So for that, if you have an old iPhone, then you might need to wait in order to see that. So now that we've seen and got an idea why Apple released this, you can see here, they mentioned that this update provides important security updates. So I'll just agree to the terms and services right here. And then I'll let the software update and we'll get to see what are the changes of the security patches and then maybe we'll do a quick geekbench just to see how performance is on this device just like that my device is now up to date i did take a screenshot but after restarting my device you can see what i came up to in the photos application if we click continue and then go to the latest picture right here you can see my device is up to date when it comes to ios 16.7.8 now quickly just going to show you the new build number or the software changes that this update has to offer if we go to the about and then go to the build number you can see right here it's for ios 16.7.8 with the build 20h34 so if you are on iOS 16.7.8, this should be the build number that you see as it's now current. Now, when it comes to some of the changes that this update has to offer, I already noticed that this update seems to be more fluid and it can be seen even by performance and overall device. Now, one of the things that I was experiencing before updating was my widgets. You notice how 
these are not showing up even when I go to edit and then try and add multiple ones. Most of them aren't loading up quickly enough. I have to almost pause and wait or sometimes remove and re-add a widget for it to be able to add information. And with this update, that seems to be an issue. But then something that this update has fixed has to do with performance so if i go into my geekbench scores right here which i was doing and to be specific this is um gpu performance and if we go to the geekbench history right here you can see before the update i got a score of 3507 and then after the update i got a score of 615 Five, three. So just to show you before, you can see these are the results that I got right here. And then if you compare with other iPhone X averages for GPU, you can see before the update, I was pretty low. And one contributing factor is definitely the fact that my device did heat up and it warmed up quite a bit. So before doing the second test of Geekbench where I got 6152, which is like literally double of what i got initially is that i let the device cool down and then i power cycled it twice just to be safe and then after that i did the gpu geekbench scores and you can see i'm actually above average because you can see here after the update comparing with other iphone x's you can see here i have they have 5142 but after the update i have 6152 now an issue that i noticed with this update that seems to be affecting this geekbench 6 application has to do with the cpu geekbench scores so before the update that was okay i was able to do an update and do uh readings but you can see before the update i got a score of for single core eight nine six and multi-core i got a score of one one four zero and you can see here if you compare single core with other devices i'm slightly below average before the update and multi-core too i'm way below average now the issue that's here after the update is that whenever i run cpu benchmarks it goes almost about halfway and then this application seems to crash so I tried to reinstall the application, but the issue seems to be more persistent. So I'll just leave it at that and I won't be able to show you the Geekbench scores for CPU single core and CPU mount core after the update because this is just an issue at this point in time. But also another thing I wanted to highlight and let you know of is once you update, go to your app store and then check if there is any updates for your current existing applications that, you know, are now being updated to work more better with an older version of iOS 16.7. When it comes to security here, you can see they resolved basically two issues the first one has to do with foundation where it says an app may be able to access user sensitive data and that was patched and then the second one has to do with rt kit where an attacker with arbitrary kernel read and write capability may be able to bypass kernel memory protections apple is aware of a report that this has been exploited and they have patched that so basically that's what apple is telling us two important security updates and that's basically what it comes to when it comes to this update of ios 16.7.8 some of the issues that were there previously with other updates that have been resolved have to do one with wireless charging if you have a device that supports wireless charging and it's still on an older version of ios 16 well that has been fixed and then even though my widgets are not showing up properly, if you use a version of macOS that supports widgets and you mirror them to your iPhone on the Mac, they are showing up good. But on the iPhone, you can see when you go to the widget page, there is virtually no information. And sometimes you have to give it a lot of time in order for it to add some information. Or if it's a widget that has to do with Apple TV, for example, and it's not showing up properly, you might need to open the application and and then after some time if you add the widget that will fix the issue but the update after maybe a few cycles it will be able to run that 
pretty good now bluetooth which was an issue too that was mentioned in the past seems to be working okay with this device i'll continue to test it out since i got my iphone x device back so that's about it for me let me know what you think about this video and if you are going to be updating to ios 16.7.8 uh one thing that i wanted to highlight is that if you have an old device like i mentioned before my iphone xs max that i updated to ios 17 by a mistake before that it was on ios 16 and i was pretty happy with it but one thing that you need to know is that once you update your old device that supports ios 17 to ios 17 from ios 16 then you won't be able to downgrade as apple is not making the ipsw files available for devices that support ios 17 to go to ios 16 so if you do update your device then you'll be stuck on ios 17 and if there's any issues or bugs then you will be basically left to work them out now that's about it for me when it comes to this update let me know what you think and if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace